<laughs> hey, I am Royal, and I'm here for a lunchtime noon devotional. And uh, I was just thinking, do you still say thank God it's Friday on Friday when you're not going home because you're already at home? So do you still say thank God it's Friday? I don't know. It is Friday. Hey, Jim and Catherine. Thank you all for being here. Hey, um, do you all have any new things because of Corona? Are there any new things that you're doing, habits you're doing, or something like that because of COVID virus? Uh, for me, for the first time today, I went to the Walmart pickup. I went to the Walmart pickup, and I used the app. And I don't know if you've done this or not before, but I told them, we told them what we wanted. I went to the store. Uh, they text. They told me I was there when I got there, and then I put in the parking space we were in. And a lady came out and loaded up my groceries and didn't even get close. She said, "I'll sign your deal for you." Is that cool or not? <laughs> Do you have any new Corona stuff? Uh, anyway, uh, hey Catherine and Denver and Lori. Uh, today I want to talk about um, this. What made the followers of Jesus give up their lives for him? What made the followers of Jesus give up their lives for him? Uh, this Sunday is uh, Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Passion Week. And, uh, you know, the it, we, if you've been in church most of your life, or maybe you were in church before and you're not in church now, whatever the situation, if you've been involved with Christianity at all, hi, Angie and Scott, um, then you know what Easter is. And that's just, we just kind of take for granted that everybody knows what Easter is. But but here's the deal. A few years ago, Barna, George Barna, who does these studies of religion in America, reported that seven in 10, 70% of respondents, people that they interviewed, mentioned religion or spirituality in their response to an open-ended question about how they describe what Easter means to them personally. Seven and ten. Now, forty-two percent. Only forty-two percent of those they interviewed tied Easter to the resurrection. See, we think I live in Texas. I don't know where you live. Uh, I live in Texas, and man, we think everybody here knows what Easter is all about. But I know from being a pastor and from being a counselor that that that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. So, so what made his disciples who were following him commit to following Jesus unto death? Because they died martyrs' deaths, except for John, and then lots of disciples and followers across the first century. Matter of fact, there are still people in, in parts of the world that are being killed on a daily basis because they won't renounce their faith in Christ. So what made these original disciples give their life to Jesus? Well, it's the resurrection. It's really all about the resurrection. Uh, you know, the apostles followed Jesus around and they saw the miracles. They saw what a great teacher he was. They knew all these great things about Jesus and they were following him and they thought he was a man who was sent from God. And they thought he was a great teacher, but they were following him because he was a great rabbi. Because these people that were following Jesus, they hadn't been picked to be rabbis. It was a, it was the what you you didn't want your kid to be a doctor back then. If you were Jewish, you wanted your kid to be a rabbi. These guys were fishermen, tax collectors, and all this. Well, they're following Jesus, who's this great teacher, this great rabbi, but they still don't think he's who he is. Matter of fact, after he died, they. They went and hid, fearful that they were going to die. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This is John 20, 6 through 9. And it's interesting that this is told this way by John, who says he was Jesus' closest friend. It says, then, uh, oh, first of all, the ladies have come back and they've announced that Jesus is gone. Now this is crazy because Jesus is locked in. There are people there that are guarding the tomb because they didn't want anybody to steal Jesus and say that he'd re resurrected. So... So, and the girls, ladies, back then the girls just got no respect at all. So when the girls came and said something, they couldn't take that as Bible. 
they had to go check for themselves. So Simon, Peter, and John took off running. They ran, and when they arrived, they went and they looked inside. Simon Peter went in first, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth had covered Jesus' head, was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the other disciple, John, remember, John is so close to Jesus. He's one of the three that got pulled up to see the transfiguration. Then John, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. See, John was afraid to go in. John was afraid to go in until Peter went in and saw it. And then listen, here we go. Then the disciple who reached the tomb first went in, and he saw the tomb was empty, and he believed. It's the resurrection, y'all. It's all about the resurrection. If, if Jesus hasn't rose from the dead, then, then we're nothing. We've got nothing to live for. We, we have no power at all. We have nothing. But it's the resurrection. John, who had been with Jesus close to him for three years, laid on Jesus' chest during the communion, uh, during the Lord's Supper, all of that stuff. He says, he saw and he believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that Jesus had been telling them all the time about rising from the dead. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? So why do we believe? Gosh, it's the resurrection. And then, and then Jesus appeared to hundreds of people. Uh, it, tra- it transformed the disciples. It changed history. The calendar is, is set by Jesus' life. And it's been now experienced by billions and billions. That's what it's all about. It's the resurrection. And if you have people in your life who don't know what the resurrection is, if you're watching this and you don't know the resurrection, it's about the resurrection. Hey, that's where we get our peace. That's where we can not be fearful of dying. That, that's where we can be kind to others who aren't kind to us. That's the thing that changes our life is knowing the resurrection and then receiving the Spirit in our lives. Hey, if you have a prayer request or if you want to know anything more about what I just said, in the description of this video is a link for prayer requests. And you can put whatever you want there. That gets emailed straight to me, straight to me. Um, Let me uh, end in the Lord's Prayer as I say I'm going to do. But I'm praying for y'all's health. If you have any other prayer requests, give them to me. And I will pray for you, I promise. Would you pray the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, thank you all so much for being here. Hey, Jordan and Mary and Susan. Uh, if you came in late, go back and re-watch this. If you know anyone that needs to hear this or needs some encouragement today, share this with others. I'll be back here for the noon devotional on Monday at noon. Anyway, thank you all. God bless.